before we begin today's program, I'd like to do something I've never done for a guest here in Power and Council. Well, thus far. And that is to strongly encourage you to reach out to Annie Lobert's ministry and make a donation. As she is on the ground rescuing victims and enslaved to the human trafficking industry. Her website can be found on https colon forward slash forward slash hookersforjesus.net forward slash hashtag donate. Or you can just go to hookersforjesus.net and scroll to the very bottom. I believe that's where you can find the donate button. Sometimes it's easier to find it that way. Not only are the victims rescued through Annie Lobert's ministry, but they are also housed, cared for, and empowered to live independently away from the cycles of physical and psychological hazardous abuse. She has also been, a, you know, a, a, our guest, and, and she also has a podcast and a TV program that you can check out. It's called The Pink Chair with Annie Lobert, which can be seen Sundays at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the right t- uh, Direct TV channel th- 376, the Dish Network channel 262, and the Glory Star channel, uh, uh, channel 117. And it also streams on Roku, on the Roku app, The Pink Chair with Annie Lobert. Also appears on Las Vegas CTN Channel 17 on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Saturday at 12.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and Monday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The CTN station also broadcasts The Pink Chair with Annie Lobert on their national website as well. It is also available on podcast form, just like here, uh, on Power and Council with Pastor Sammy on Spotify. And uh, they also have an additional platform on Apple Podcast. Annie Lobert has also just recently been uh, featured on the streets on a program about rescuing people or approaching people who are victims of human traffic at that time on the streets on Las Vegas, which is something that she's been doing for years, but now it is televised. Again, please go to hookersforjesus.net and help them out. This is a, a very, very important cause where people today are being enslaved through human trafficking and the sex slave industry. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I have a great opportunity to speak with one of the leading voices in what is called human trafficking. I know that that word has been on and off on the news now, a lot of people don't really know what it means. And so I would like for everyone here on Walking on Water Ministries to be alerted as to what it is. Is it something that is just out there in a foreign soil? Uh, just recently, I heard that in Ukraine, a lot of the refugees are starting to leave. And they're unfortunately falling in the hands of human traffickers pretending to be ministers and there to help them. And so when we hear human traffickers, we're thinking, well, what is it? What exactly? Are they going to put them to work? Are they going to put them to traffic them somewhere else, uh, charge them extra money for immigration? What is it exactly? Well, I have one of the leading voices, uh, the author of the book, Fallen. Her name is Annie Lobert. She is a woman of God who God uses greatly in regards to conferences, in regards to ministering to victims who have fallen into human trafficking. So here with you is Annie Lobert. Annie Lobert, thank you for joining us. Please say hi to the audience. Hello, audience. Yes, I, I'm so thankful, Pastor Sammy, to be on your podcast and your show because people need to be aware of human trafficking. If, if someone doesn't understand what that is, very simply, it's anytime someone is enslaved to another human being or organization or business where they're being sold, as a human commodity against their will uh, with force, fraud, and coercion. And a lot of people are like, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it could be anything. It could be labor trafficking, just like you talked about Ukraine. Simple. They have fake ministers coming in and saying, come with me. I'm going to get you some food and water and some shelter. Then all of a sudden, they're giving them that. They're giving them what they need. But then they say, okay, well, you owe me now. I've been doing this to, to you for two weeks. We've been providing this for you. And now... You're going to the bar and you're going to sell yourself. Mm. We're going to bring men in here and they can do whatever they want because you owe us. Mm. So that's just one example of the 25 
types of trafficking mm-hmm. that can happen to someone. <laughs> or it could just be labor, of course, not just mm-hmm. sexual. It could be where literally they're being taken to a, you know, like a prison type of factory and their beds are on the property and they're making something in that factory to benefit mm-hmm. the organization, corporation or crime organization, right? So that's human trafficking, and uh, it happens every single day. And sexual trafficking is about a hundred fifty billion dollar industry a wow. year. That number is probably very conservative. I don't believe that's the correct number. I believe it's in the trillions. Mm. Wow, that's yeah. scary. Well, you know, I I just <laughs> uh, I just got your book, and uh, the book fallen. I'm about halfway, uh, Miss Annie, and. Uh, all I tell you is I don't even want to mention his name because um, saying that name just really gets me really upset. And so, uh, <laughs> okay, but still. <laughs> yeah, Julian and Peter. Okay, right? yeah. Right now, I wish I could have Julian and, uh, you know. <laughs> you know what you need to do? Uh-huh. This is where a lot of people get it twisted. And I'm going to talk mm-hmm. to the church right now. I'm going to talk please, to the Please, please do so. I'm going to talk to people that are new Christians and old Christians. Okay, listen. You cannot think like that. Mm, help me. We have to do, yes. and it's okay to get righteous anger. Mm. We have to pray for these people mm. that are abusing others because more often than not, they were first abused themselves. And you mentioned that in the book, correct? Right. Yes. Well, I have I, I have the book with me. Uh, I've, I've been trying to eat it up and eat it up as much as I can. And uh, yes, I got, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we get. Don't forget. Yes. Don't forget, I have it. Too, can you please tell us about that uh, in regards yeah. to why? To actually, tell us why people need to get the book, and also tell us why uh, people need to get it to other people in Spanish. By the way, so the reason why you would want to read a story or listen or watch a story on human trafficking is because it gets personal. It makes it real, and someone's experience can transform a heart mm-hmm. literally in minutes. And I think it's really important that you share the stories of the trafficking victims. And also the best part about it is the redemption side of the book, the redemption side of a story is that's what our whole Bible's full of, right? Mm -hmm. Our faith is full of stories of people overcoming the worst plights Mm -hmm. set forth in trials in their life. Look at the Israelites. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, they were the main slaves in the Bible. So it's like we have to really... Uh, get encouraged by stories, but also it helps us understand. And I think empathy and compassion and Mm -hmm. mercy come into play on a more human level when we hear the actual experience Mm -hmm. and and how we walked it out and how we came out of it and how we overcame the darkness and the the trials and the the severe complex trauma Mm -hmm. that comes with human trafficking. And now in regards to it being available in Spanish, I had looked for it. I think it, it is it only available on, like an audiobook or Kindle or something like it's, that? You know, we don't have it in Spanish on audio, mm-hmm. but we it's all in English because mm-hmm. I am the one who did the book in English mm-hmm. uh, as far as like the speaking end of it. The Spanish portion of the book is actually available on Amazon and actually it's also on the Walmart site. Believe it or not, all right. Yeah. I mean, I found it there one day. I was like, what is my book in Spanish doing at Walmart? Yep. <laughs> it's listed there. So I don't know how many copies are left. So y'all need to get them because it's the last of them. They're, they're running really thin now because I haven't reordered the Spanish, which I might do if there's a demand for it. And you, there you hasn't been a lot of distribution advertisement. That's well, we need, to, we need to change that because uh, I know that you and I had spoken before uh, this actual interview and can you tell us one one is have you ministered in spanish uh you know in spanish uh environments or or uh conferences absolutely. you have correct absolutely it's so fun by the way because i talk mm-hmm. so fast that the person that interprets me has to like really talk really fast in spanish to catch up. <laughs> i have to remember to pause but uh, in costa rica mm-hmm. i did a youth conference it was really wonderful. I think I spoke five times. It was for the whole weekend. And then in, in of course, Puerto Rico, mm. I spoke at, I think, five different churches. Mm. I kind of did like a book tour. Mm. It was really awesome. And yes, all the churches were Spanish. <laughs> you know, you're in Puerto Rico, go figure. And of course, it was mm-hmm. so fun because all the churches, you know, I did it for a couple weekends straight. Mm-hmm. All the churches uh, were so gracious and they were actually shocked that 
trafficking was something real. And of course, this is when the book first came out in 2015, mm-hmm. 16. Mm-hmm. So I actually wrote my story in 2000, probably five, 2004. Mm-hmm. I never finished it until, you know, a decade later. So mm. I'm really glad. And I, I'm also trying to write another book right now, too. I'm All so praise busy. God. It's like, I like to write, I like to share, I like to talk. So mm-hmm. that's, I've got issues. Okay, right? <laughs> you've, you've got a great issue, actually. It's a great op, uh, blessing and an opportunity. Now, being that you, you know, ministered in, you know, Spanish congregations and Spanish conferences, uh, why is it, though, that if, even if you don't speak English, you need to get the book and give it to someone who does speak English? Why, in particular, Latin America, it seems that this word is not even really a word. It's like it doesn't go through people's minds. But yet, a lot of Latin Americans fall prey to human trafficking. Why would you say that people need to get this book for people in Latin America? Because, listen, here's the deal. The countries that aren't like America have a poverty issue. And because of that, there's a lot of corruption. The governments are basically socialized. So we know what that is. It's a socialized type of system. It's not necessarily a democracy anymore. It's a dictatorship, Mm. especially there's South American countries that are dictatorships, Venezuela, you know, of course we got Cuba and, 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 you know, it's very important that people understand what it is because what happens to people that have poverty and that they don't have food, they don't have water, they don't have just, you know, it's so simple, a toilet in their house. Believe it or not, we're so spoiled in America here. We've got toilets in our house. We don't have to go to the outhouse, right? Mm-hmm. And we have shelter and there's a lot of great food programs. And I know we have homelessness here, but there's tremendous homelessness in other countries that are Spanish speaking. So they need to get the book in their hands because it's a bigger problem, mm-hmm. I believe, in countries of poverty. Exactly. You grab the women, you grab the children, and it's so easy to take them because they're so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Poverty puts you in such a bad position to be trafficked. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we get it out to the masses and educate them. And then create also programs in these countries to help people that Mm -hmm. have been trafficked and to also obviously prevent it. Mm -hmm. And in regards to, uh, let's say, going into uh, human trafficking, we hear about it. Maybe we can, uh, I, I encourage other people, please get a hold of that book and please help uh, other ministries that are doing something about this particular program. And maybe they're not able to do something about it themselves. They don't have the resources to do it themselves. If someone is moved by the Holy Spirit to maybe uh, help you all uh, by giving a donation or by buying more of your material, where can they find that? Where can they do that, Annie? Yeah, they can just go to pinkchair.com. It's AKA Hookers for Jesus. So also hookersforjesus.net, like Fishnet. It'll take Mm -hmm. you to the same site. There's a nice donate button there, and they can donate through PayPal or our Stripe. Mm. We have two different ways to donate, and super simple. And we obviously, right here in Las Vegas, we have two houses we have the Dream House and the Destiny House. The first house is a long term healing program. It's 12 months to two years and then the second mm-hmm. house is a, it's about a year to two years as well so our program could go anywhere from two years to four the second house is a place where ladies that graduate our first pro- program can move into after they graduate this program and live more independently it's less structured there's less staff available and they're pretty much going to school or using getting their new job or working their new job and saving for like a car or maybe their own place eventually. Hopefully that's the end goal. Mm -hmm. We want to help people become self-sustained and be able to live by themselves or live with roommates or whatever they need to do and maybe even start their own business. Just be a, a person in the world that is now healed and whole and go back out into the world and become a productive citizen that is just like me. They don't have to do what I do but someone that's ready to go back out to society. And Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say be normal, but be a life changer Mm -hmm. to be a game changer for other people that are stuck. And and the reason for that is because a lot of these victims, uh, you know, it's it's not that sex is all they've known. The thing is that because they were trafficked, 
uh, they've lost so much and, and their, their spirit is so crushed that they feel that they have no other option but to be depending on this type of industry to make a living or even survive. Now, I, I'm going to ask you to, if you can briefly just tell us, because I have a feeling some people upon hearing your ad, your, your web address, probably kind of lost track of what you were saying because they heard the word hooker. Can you please tell us why uh, your the website is called Hookers for Jesus? Because I based the name of the ministry, which was in 2004, 2005, I based it on Matthew 419. I will teach you how to fish for people. And duh, you need a hook uh -huh. when you go fishing. <laughs> Some yeah. people use net, so that's why I put hookersforjesus.net. Mm -hmm. so one <laughs> it's really important that people don't get that twisted because mm -hmm. the first four disciples were fishermen. And Jesus called them from their fisherman job into his ministry, into his new, uh, you know, new world, his kingdom. And so why wouldn't people understand that? Well, pe a lot of people are in church. That's probably why they wouldn't understand that. Also, I think it was a personal jab towards my authority figures in my life that were calling me names and basically saying that I was a hooker. You're just a hooker. You'll never be anything else. You're a whore, you're this, you're that. So I kind of took that name and kind of slapped them in the face with it. Like, oh, you want to call me a hooker? Well, let's go. Because mm. I'm a hooker for Jesus now. Praise God. And obviously with my story, you know, I was trafficked out of Minnesota. I came to Las Vegas and I w thought I was with my boyfriend. The first night that I worked, I was completely, totally beat down. And that's what they call the breaking period of a relationship when it comes to a trafficker and the victim. Mm -hmm. And so I was his slave for the next five years. And after I finally got away from him, after he kidnapped me several times and beat me down again, he beat me many different times in our relationship. It took every single dollar I ever made. The second I thought he was my boyfriend turned out to be just as horrendous. He was more abusive. He was physically abusive, but he used to lock me in the house without, I didn't have any keys to get out. He had bars on the doors. And he was really like emotionally and mentally uh, abusive, but he also was a choker. He would choke me out and I would pass out and he would take the pillows and cover my face. And he also dislocated my shoulder. Um, so yeah, he was the type that didn't hit me in my face, but he would do other things. Mm -hmm. And he ended up, just destroying my life. Mm -hmm. I was with him for another five years. So a decade, a decade, oh, Lord. Sammy, of trafficking. Mm. My experience. That's 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 horrible. I'm, I'm just glad that you're not there. And, uh, and sexualized. I, I, mm -hmm. so I was a call girl. So if anyone doesn't know what that is, it was I would go on calls on the Las Vegas Strip in the beautiful five-star, four-star hotels. Mm -hmm. And I would go on these calls and I would get the money for the agency, which was 150 to 250 Then I would get my tip above that, which, which is usually between... You know, anywhere from two, three, four, five hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollar tip, sometimes even more. And that money would go to my trafficker. Mm -hmm. The rest of the agency money would go to the agency and the phone girl. Mm -hmm. So I was a high class call girl. Mm. Could you tell? Not really. But I dressed really good. I had diamonds on. I had designer gigs on. I drove a really nice car. And so everyone thought I was maybe. I don't know, maybe a stripper or mm -hmm. or maybe a showgirl because I used to wear eyelashes before eyelashes were cool again. I was mm -hmm. wearing eyelashes and I would put like little diamonds on my face and wear hair extensions and just look really cute mm -hmm. because the better you looked, the more money you made. Mm -hmm. so. and, and, and you know that when you read the, the story, I, I as I was reading the story, uh, I, I, you did an excellent job showing basically you the person really well i get i got gripped uh in the sense because i saw you as i was reading the story from just being a, a regular little girl to then being in this situation now i'm a father of, of four daughters and i would not want this to happen to oh, them wow. okay and yeah. so uh here's here's a question is can you give the audience at least uh, I already gave them as to how they can help, you know, one way or the other. They, this is not a calling for them, but they can help by either donating or supporting a, a ministry like yours. But what about them? Uh, this Again, this is something like it, it sounds like it's just down in the very inner city uh, that this is what's going on. But 
there's girls no, that are taken from it's everywhere, it's right? Everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in the country. It's in mm -hmm. the beautiful mansions. It's on the beach. It's everywhere. So I don't care what anybody says. You can argue with correct. it to, to the cows come home. Yes. Because they're not going to come home because guess what? <laughs> yeah. It's everywhere. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I was working at a mental health clinic uh, less than a year ago. And uh, the, unfortunately, they refused to even uh, listen when I had to tell them, look, the state of Texas, because we're in Texas, the state of Texas is asking us to be more alert uh, and screen for human trafficking because there's people that go to the doctor, there's people that go to regular screenings, uh, dental work or whatever, and they may be trafficked and you wouldn't know. And, and then one way or the other, they wish someone asked them, you know, hey, is there something we can do? So anybody can fall in any type of an environment, a victim to human trafficking. So here's here's my big question is what can the average person, because it, it happens everywhere, like you said, is there three things you can advise them that they can do in their own life to prevent human trafficking from afflicting their family? Right. Or them, right? You're Correct. Just making sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first of all, be aware. Mm -hmm. And if I would do number one thing I would do is look it up and learn about it and learn what it is and how it happens to someone in labor two topics someone in labor because this is the most common mm. labor trafficking and sex trafficking get educated number one thing okay uh number two clean up your social media like do you have anyone that's trying to talk to you mm. is it possible that the guy or the girl you're dating is trying to get you involved and maybe one of your girlfriends make sure that they're they themselves aren't in the sex industry and trying to pull you in. I'm not saying don't be friends with people that are in the sex industry like I had, but that's one of the gateways and doorways for people mm. to get pulled in is by a friend. It's always by someone they know usually. Mm. It's by someone they're dating or a family friend or someone that's, hey, I have a new job. I know that you're hard up for money. You know, And that's the thing is you cannot be desperate. I, and I think, and I don't wanna not involve faith here, but Here's the thing is, I would say is to pray and to make sure before you jump into any relationship, third thing, you need to be healed. Any type of relationship, make sure that you're not a codependent person. Make sure that you're not someone that trusts someone and naive and th you don't have a lot of experience and you're, let's say you're jumping into a romantic relationship. This is the first thing that the traffickers look for is naivety, inexperience, and desperation for, mm. for money, poverty. So I would just really like, that's really hard to like analyze yourself. But if you feel like, gosh, I'm afraid to, um, like I'm so insecure, I can't even talk to a guy. I would literally try to get some counseling behind that and maybe mm. just talk to your pastors or if you don't have pastors, someone that you trust, maybe your mom and dad, maybe your auntie, your uncle. Mm -hmm. it, about relationships study what is a toxic relationship look like mm -hmm. because usually toxic relationships end up becoming trafficking relationships mm. that's usually the uh the little segue into the real exploitation mm -hmm. you know there's actually sammy there's so many things that i could share with you of what to do what not to do you know basically the number one thing though number one thing i would say is after your education is done with all of this, make sure your heart is healed. Because that's, I think, the main, mm -hmm. main thing traffickers look for is a broken heart. Mm -hmm. A broken heart. Someone that's looking to be loved. And if mm -hmm. they can find anyone that's looking to be loved, that's looking to make some money, because usually when you're, make, when you're looking to make money, you're trying to provide for your family or for yourself. Maybe you're trying to go to school, but also you feel like if you have nice things, that's what I did, a nice car, reliable transportation, right? A nice place to live, that maybe people will respect you more and like you more. Mm -hmm. And that goes for a lot of humans. Mm -hmm. A lot of humans, luxury and comfort is something that is desired that makes you feel safe and comforted. So if you don't have that, some some of us will do anything wow. to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And if they can't get the job that they want, the well-paying job that they need, escorting, stripping, mm -hmm. you know, only fans mm -hmm. seems to add to that luxury, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem is with that is that even if you enter the sex industry just on 
you know, I'm just going to be in it for a little bit. There's not going to be any pimps involved, uh, AKA traffickers, and I'm going to keep all my own money. That's well and done at the same time. However, first of all, you're compromising yourself. Okay. It makes you feel full of shame. Even if you're not even full of faith at the time, and if you're not even believing in God, it does something to your psyche and your emotions and your heart that destroys your soul. Mm -hmm. It's a soul destroying job. And the next thing is you're going to eventually meet the trafficker. Mm -hmm. They will show up. Trust me. Mm -hmm. They always do Mm -hmm. because in the beginning I didn't have one, but they eventually show up Mm -hmm. and you will be vulnerable enough to trust them because you feel like you're alone. Cause when you're in the sex industry, you are kind of alone and the people that you do know, usually they all have traffickers. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe there's a small percentage that don't, but they're usually eventually getting trafficked themselves. Mm-hmm. What, what they got the- in the sex industry because out of the insecurity and they didn't love themselves mm-hmm. and they felt insecure. So they got into the sex industry mm-hmm. and they wanted to make money. A lot of people might argue with me about that, mm-hmm. but hands down, usually when people get out of the sex industry, these are all the things that they share. Mm-hmm. about why they got into it. What, what about the, the notion the, the notion that a lot of girls are fooled with the fact that they, they're with a monster, and but deep inside of them, they feel that the monster will eventually change? Well, especially if you've been in a relationship or the lack thereof, let's say in a home life where you were, your mom and dad were fighting and you saw your mom get hit. Or your mom had a boyfriend that came in and hit her frequently and domestic violence was witnessed all the time. Uh, Kids that are orphans, kids that are just one parent kids, children are very vulnerable to trafficking because there's not really that solid relationship of the father mother figures in their life. We're designed by DNA to have a father and a mother, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's what makes us, duh. Mm -hmm. If if an egg in, in the womb is fertilized by a sperm, there's a father and a mother, Mm -hmm. right? So it stands to reason that as human beings, that's a natural thing that God designed for us to have a father, for us to have a a mother. And when that's not in, and and don't get me wrong, because see, in my life, in my personal story, my dad was around Mm -hmm. and he was very abusive. Um, I got abused and sexual abused when I was eight, nine years old from a neighbor. And that can also be a prerequisite and a, a cautionary share about if you've been sexually abused you unless you get some counseling and some healing you're going to be vulnerable to relationships that are inappropriate right. often, more times than not and, and you know what uh annie when i was uh praying about this program and and speaking with you uh the the bible's full of examples of things that happen and sometimes we kind of don't really see a little bit more into what was going on there but when you see what happened with abraham and sarah and how he yeah. was he, he was even willing to let her sleep with someone else. But then you see yeah. that pattern from, yeah, you're from like, Abraham, were you the first pimp of the Bible? I know, I know. And and then his sons, <laughs> his sons ended up doing the same thing. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and it's always with the fact of someone wanting to have be validated, but yet the first ones that should have validated you and should have taken care of you did not. And, and I want, and this scripture came to my mind and I want to share with people. Uh, it is from Isaiah chapter 54 and it is a f- uh, verse five. And it I says, yeah, it says for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and the redeemer, the Holy one of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. Now, if you are for whatever reason hurting, uh, I, I pray that you reach out. I pray that you reach out to a minister that cares because not all ministers would know what to do. But I, I, I encourage you to reach out to us and we will be glad to minister to your heart, to your soul, to your spirit, and make sure that you are free and delivered from all these bondages that the enemy has, uh, has put on you. But Annie, I would like to ask you to finish up what would be your advice to the church and to anyone that could probably be under this bondage right now? What would be your, your, power, your words of power and counsel to them? I would say number one, which is always the, the underlying issue with a lot of churches, is give grace and mercy mm-hmm. to those that are being trafficked and do not judge them. 
uh, it's really easy for someone to throw stones. We got the story in John 10 about, you know, the woman caught in adultery, right? Um, I'm sorry, it was June, uh, John 8. Yeah, John 8, the woman in adultery. And that, that one of the main things about that story that really touched me was the fact that Jesus came in and said, you know, those that are without sin, just cast that first stone. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm paraphrasing. But do you remember how he talked about everyone just walked away from the, the oldest first to the youngest? And then he said, where are your accusers? And she said, there are no, Lord. There's none mm -hmm. left. And he was like, go and sin no more. And it was like, that one, to me was like the most beautiful exchange of the, the Savior's love that, mm -hmm. that I personally like, wow, it really touched me because that was me. And I was the woman in the well. Uh, you know, the woman, five husbands, where are they? Well, they're not here. <laughs> where are they? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I guess you were kind of a, sleep around chick getting some money there because back then you know people had a you know when they're the husbands they would go to war and they would often get killed and then the wives would inherit their mm -hmm. their spoils and it's like why do you have five husbands mm -hmm. it just made me think like was she looking to be taken care of and i totally get it and then of course rahab we don't know if she was trafficked or not but there's a lot of signs that she was I would say, don't judge, like I said earlier, have mercy and compassion and, and listen, listen to the stories of the survivors. Also help us help survivor led organizations. Mm. I know there's a lot of orgs that have popped up that people want to do something because they hear this message in church and they get so excited. I want to help. I want to do this. I want to do that. That's, that's good. That's great. They can donate, but I would definitely make sure that those agencies are vetted, but also are they survivor informed and are they survivor led? We are competing with orgs that are pros at raising funds that have college education. That's all they've ever done is raise funds. And so when it comes to the survivors, to me, we are the most informed and one of the best teachers to get out of this, this slavery. Mm -hmm. we're, we're the people that the ladies and the, the men I've met and the boys and girls I've met in this, that they trust the most. So we should be supported. And I really ask the church to step up and find survivor-led orgs in their communities and really try to help and ask them, do you need help? What, what do you need financially? What do you need as volunteers? What do you need us to donate, you know, a house, a car? The first house that I ever got was from a church. Mm. The a property that I'm on right now is uh, I got introduced to two pastors and then a couple that was just had a huge heart for trafficking. And they said, hey, you can use this property. And it's it's on several acres. Mm. And after two years, we got the property given to us. Praise the Lord. Because mm -hmm. they believed in survivor led. That's that's amazing. Well, I, I and so yeah. that's that's what we need. Well, I encourage you all to reach out to Annie, and uh, thank you, Annie, for being with us. And we pray again. Uh, I, I encourage you look for that website and donate and help and pray for them and get the book. Uh, the book is really really good. And for everybody else, until next time, I thank you for joining us, so that together we will supernaturally walk on water. Be blessed. Thank you.